As a new day dawns on the west coast of Florida, rising with the sun are the hopes and dreams of the clowns of the future. Today, time seems suspended as each clown waits for the moment of truth. Before the day ends, each waiting clown will meet success or failure. For the past 10 weeks, 57 student clowns have worked and played together as a group, but today, clowning around becomes serious business. Now is the time for the solitary clown within each student to emerge and wait alone for the future to unfold. The story of the making of a clown began years ago for some and months ago for others in places as distant as Maine, California, and Texas. Along with 6,000 other hopeful students this year, the ones in our story applied to Ringling Brothers Barnum and Bailey Clown College, the only institution in the world dedicated exclusively to the art of clowning. Only 57 of the 6,000 were chosen for the training, and tonight, less than half of these will realize their dream of becoming a circus clown. Twenty-one members of the class will be offered jobs with the greatest show on earth. Three months ago, the students arrived with high hopes. They have traveled thousands of miles to come here and stay in Venice, Florida. Here at this motel, they sleep and dream and wait. Tonight, when they return, the competition will be over. Behind closed doors, there will be either celebration or sorrow. This morning, the special bus picks up the students for the last time and takes them inland a few miles to the winter headquarters of Ringling Brothers Barnum and Bailey Circus. The swaying palm trees dotting the grounds of this huge complex does little to ease the mounting tension. Inside the building, the darkened arena waits for the clowns. In this ring, each will perform and compete in a unique graduation ceremony under this flamboyant banner. In a few hours, these empty seats will be filled with judges who will determine by their laughter and applause the success of the student clown. Above the seats is the viewing room where the real climax of the day takes place. Behind glass windows, job contracts will be offered to the most talented clowns. We ask the Dean of Clown College, Ron Severini, to describe the job of a clown. Well, first of all, I don't think that it's really a job. I don't think that somebody goes in and says, okay, now my job is I'm going to wake up in the morning, I'm going to go to the circus and be a clown. I mean, you really live being a clown. Uh, the responsibilities of the clowns with Ringing Brothers and Barn Belly Circus are to amuse, to entertain, to enchant, to get the audience to laugh. I personally feel that the job, the responsibilities of the clown are to make that day that they're attending, the greatest show on earth, the best day that anybody could possibly spend in their entire life. And way down the line somewhere when somebody maybe gets to be a little bit older and they reflect back onto their life and they try and think about all the good times that they have, the, one of the top things that they remember is the day that they saw the clowns in Ringling Brothers and Barnum Miller Circus. And that's the ultimate. Ron, if a clown is not accepted or invited to join the circus as a clown, what other career options are there for him? Well, we get phone calls and letters all the time from people in the business looking for the clown college graduates. There are opportunities now for clowns, seeing that clowning is becoming I mean, a, a very big demand here in the country, for clowns in the performance shopping centers and amusement parks. There are many amusement parks around the country. There are other circuses at Touring America and all over the world. Uh, modeling agencies, big franchise that have characters. Uh, you know, costume characters. There are ball teams, football teams, baseball teams that have characters that they're looking for someone to animate that character for them. Uh, teaching clowning to other people that some people that do it on an amateur level locally in town or at a full time at a professional level. I know many, many people that have quit their jobs and have pursued clowning as a full time profession, make a very good living at it, surprisingly enough. 
According to Severini, there are no losers in tonight's competition. We asked Maria, a student clown, to share her feelings about the competition. Oh, I'm really excited because, you know, this is what it all came down to, all the, you know, weeks of hard work and everything. And, you know, tonight's the night and uh, the decisions made, who goes where and whether or not you get a contract. And I'm really excited, I'm nervous, I'm anxious, and then I'm sad to see it the end of such a great thing. As some clowns make last-minute preparations and Maria gets ready inside, outside the arena, preparations of the last three months are also rapidly coming to a close. Props are getting their last coat of paint and mechanical inventions are being checked and adjusted. The two dozen instructors at Clown College include master carpenters and designers as well as circus performers. The experts work alongside the students, continuing the centuries-old tradition of masters sharing the secrets of their crafts with apprentices. Many physical skills, such as unicycling, are taught here. And now, just before showtime, warm-up routines are being performed in every available area. Unicycling demands balance, coordination, concentration, and plenty of practice. Macaroni the Clown rides the two- and three-wheeled unicycle, as well as this traditional one-wheeler. As we turned to go back inside, we looked up and up and up. Eighteen feet in the air was Iceberg, a circus clown who teaches stilt walking. Because this particular skill is dangerous and requires long hours to learn, the student clowns are not required to take the course. Iceberg told us he loves it up there, and later when we talked, he explained. This is Jim Arnberg, instructor here of stilt walking at Clown College. Jim, I understand stilt walking is a very dangerous skill to learn. Can you explain why? Okay, uh, we teach the students here at Clown College um, the basic fundamentals of stilt walking, which is quite a bit different than uh, stilt walking and ringling bellies and bottom bellies circus when you're traveling on the road because there's a lot of cables that go underneath the mat and high above and so we use a mechanic down here and there's no cables or no wires underneath so it's just basic training for them to get on the road. How many out of the 59 students that you currently have here at the college, how many stilt walking clowns do you have? Uh, well, we have 14 that walk actually in the Clown College gala performance, um, but altogether there's been about 22 that have attempted and succeeded uh, walking stilts. When you first begin to teach the student clowns how to walk on stilts, how do you actually start? How high are they? Okay, we start usually about on three foot stilts with a mechanic around their waist and they also have... What is a mechanic? A mechanic is a belt 